Today we'll go over how to create this map with data-driven circles using the data visualization component in Mapbox Studio. We'll create this map, which shows all the fire data in a 24-hour period in April of 2019. Kind of intense, right? So let's get started. I'm going to start this viz with a monochrome style because it has a minimal palette that lets the data viz really pop. First, I'll click on the Add Component in the top left corner, and next I'll select Data Visualization. This gives me the option to select a data source that I already have uploaded or to upload new data. In this case, I'm going to click Source and select a data source that I already have. I'm going to go into Add Source by ID and paste in the name of my tileset ID. I made this public, which means that you can type this in and you'll also be able to add it to your account. Next, click Find, and you can see here that all of the fire data is now on the map. Go to Select Visualization Type, and the DataViz component will give us a recommended visualization type based off of our data. In this case, because my data is point data, it's recommending data-driven circles. Next, I'll select that. The data visualization component will undergo smart styling, which intuitively scans your data for ways to represent it and give you a place to start off. But to fine tune our visualization, we can go into the properties here and start making changes. First, I'm gonna change the size of the circles from track to FRP. This is the fire radiative power, which is the rate of emitted radiative energy by the fire at the time of the observation. Depending on your data's range, you may also want to adjust the stops. You can add up to seven stops. In my case, much of the data is at the lower end of the spectrum, and then I won't see too much variance, so I'm gonna keep the three stops. You can also adjust the sizing of all of the circles. Because I have so many data points, I'm going to adjust the sizing all the way down. I'm making this design decision because there are a lot of points that are close to each other, and I wanna show as many as possible with the largest fires most prominent. Next, let's change the color value to brightness. We can do that by selecting on the database icon and then searching for brightness. Similar to the circle size, the color also allows for up to seven stops. I'm gonna keep these three stops and lower the opacity just a bit. I still kinda wanna make them visible. And next, I'm gonna change the stroke. You can change it to be darker than fill or lighter than fill, but ultimately, I just want the stroke off. I just add the stroke off because I have so many points on my map that I really just kinda wanna show all of their density without kind of having the strokes overlap over each other and hide some of the points. Next, we'll look into adding labels. We can do that by toggling on right here. And if we zoom in a bit, we can see that all these fires happened in just one day. That's wild. These labels do make our map look a little bit crowded though, so I'm actually gonna take them off. Next, I will X out of my data viz component. And there's just a couple more edits I wanna make. First off, I wanna change the color palette from polar to arid because this is fire data. And lastly, I'm gonna add in the satellite by clicking on the add new component button again, but this time scrolling all the way down to satellite imagery, selecting that and changing the satellite style from standard to black and white. And that's it, my map is now complete. So I'm going to publish. And we can see what a big difference that that's made in our map. Now I can share the space map style with the share URL by clicking on share. And I can share it right here by copying this link. Or I can add it directly into my application by clicking on the style URL and copying my access token too. Thanks, happy mapping.